everyone, my name is Abhishek Jain and welcome back to the Docker Tutorial Series Part 13. Before proceeding with this video, I would highly recommend you to watch Part 11 and Part 12 because in those two parts we have covered how Docker manages, you know, the container data and what all options do we have to persist the container data because by default Docker does not persist the container data. So let's quickly do the recap what we had covered in the previous video. In the previous video, we covered one of the option which Docker provides to persist a container data that is Docker volume, right? So Docker volume is the storage which Docker internally maintains on its storage driver, which is though it is there in a host machine on which the Docker daemon is installed, but that is completely owned by the Docker engine or the Docker team. We covered how we can create the volume, then we how we can mount the Docker volume. So agenda for today's video is to understand the another option which Docker provide us to persist a container data that is bind mount. What does it mean? So bind mount is if on a host machine on which your Docker daemon is running, if you have any local location or the local folder location which you want to mount to the Docker container so that container can create the data inside that local folder, then you can use this bind mount, right? Then so let's quickly just do the demo to figure it out how we can use the bind mount. So for that, let me just open the command prompt. So uh, let me just see if there is any process is running. It's not that important. Uh, so let me just quickly first create uh, one folder. Uh, let's say the folder name is bind mount demo okay so let me put uh, there is nothing right so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mount this particular location on the container so when we were run a container whatever data we gonna create or whatever file we gonna create inside the data container that would be that would be getting created over here so that if we kill the docker container still we can see the container data which container has created for us so for that matter what we have to do is let me just use this command docker run i will be using minus it to just get inside the docker container then i'm just gonna put the name the option to just mount that local location is minus v so there are two options with docker provide minus v and the hyphen hyphen mount that we gonna that we gonna see uh, in our upcoming uh, in our upcoming uh, section so docker run then hyphen it then hyphen v just to mount and the location is d drive we have to give this in a small d right and then colon in which folder inside the container we want to put this so let's put that bind Then I'm just gonna execute this alpine image because it's the smallest one. And then I'm just getting inside. So this alpine image is going to create, this alpine image is going to create a container. Inside that we're gonna see how we can persist the data by this command. Right. So ls minus ltr. So now you can see this bind mount demo. Okay. So if currently if I just get inside this folder, There is nothing because we don't have anything here, right? So let me quickly create one file inside this file test one dot txt bind mount persistence data to my file. And let me save this. LTR. We have this file test one dot txt. Now you can see this file text one is created here right earlier it was not there and let's quickly verify the content right see this is what we had created right so that is how you can use this bind bound bind mount right but if i just you know come out from this and if i want to use another command let's say i don't want to use this hyphen v instead i want to use hyphen mount then 
what we have to give is the very first option is type we have to define a type what kind of type we want to give and that is going to be bind then i'm just going to define the source source is going to be the location uh, on our local host machine then comma then i have to give target equals to where i want to create that right so right so this time i can create okay so everything looks fine now let me just again run this so uh, let me just put that ls minus ltr we can again see this bind mount if i get inside this let's see what happens we can see the same file which we had created in the previous running container which we exit here right the moment we exit here that gets killed right so now if i just create file text2.txt and I put something, let's say, bind demo with option mount. So let's see what happened this time. Ls minus ltr. Now we have two files. Let's quickly check here. Okay, now we have two files. What would happen if I just create another file here? Let's say I wanted to create file three. something in it a little bit shake so let's see what happens now can I see that yes so that is how and similarly if you will do the same thing you know so 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 now question arises which option we should go for in the real time application whether we should be create we should be using a volume or we should be using a bind mount so for that i mean i will be keeping that topic for the next video because i have to cover a lot of stuff to just explain in which scenario which option you you need to use most of the time i prefer to use volume because that gives me you know the portability that gives me you know if i want to share or migrate the docker container volume to the remote machine or the cloud platform that i can always do that right so that's it from my side for this particular video uh, but in the next video we definitely gonna see uh, in which in, in which real time scenario we have to use volume and which real time scenario we have to use bind mount and which one is the good and in which situation right both are good but it depends what kind of use case you have based on that you can always decide which option you should go for right and apart from that i just gonna cover you know in upcoming um, in upcoming videos some real time or the very frequently faced error by the beginners when they start using the volume in the bind mount so that we're gonna cover in the next two videos right so that's it from my side for this particular video as always if you have any feedback or comment any suggestion please feel free to put that in a comment section um, and thanks for watching this and stay healthy and as always keep learning